Good evening, and welcome to the WCHA 2021 Virtual Assembly. My name is Pete Shea, and I am a WCHA Board of Directors member. During this presentation, I will introduce you to a great alternative method for cooking your outdoor meals. It is no mess, no fuss, great food, and minimum cleanup. Let's get on with the show. I will be talking about my background and how my campfire cooking evolved. Bottom line, I enjoy camping and eating well. You will learn what the bait packer is, how to prepare meals, and make your own bait packer. Hopefully, this will make you want to go out and enjoy the great outdoors with a new cooking method. I have been a WCHA member since 1987 after building a Gilpatrick stripper canoe. At that time, I was also involved in Boy Scouts and Girl Scouts. Through scouting, I became active in camping, hiking, and canoeing. I became a BSA Voyager guide that required an eight-day certification course. As a result of that training, I started to lead and plan week-long high adventure trips for the Boy Scouts in the Adirondacks. My daughter's Girl Scout troop asked me to do a trip for the girls, and it was a wonderful experience. I ended up doing 14 years of trip planning and leadership for the Girl Scouts. In recognition of my leadership, I was awarded the Lifetime Leader Membership as thanks from the Girl Scouts. This collage of pictures from the Girl Scout trip shares many great memories with the girls and their accomplishments. This slide is about how my camp cooking evolved. As a kid, I grew up with the woods across the street where we established trails and our own camp. A half mile away, the town was located. We would collect soda and beer bottles to get enough money to buy hot dogs and rolls. No condiments, but we always had matches to start the campfire. Now move forward to my 20s and my next camping experience is where we had tinfoil dinners that my experienced buddies introduced me to. They were just the basic fixings of hamburger, potatoes, onions, and some salt and pepper. Now married, my camping experience was with the family using our pop-up camper at campgrounds. We would cook on the camper propane stoves and sometimes have pit fires to prepare our food in. Overall, they were good, hearty meals. They were not meals that you would want to carry in your backpack because of the weight and bulk. As I became active in scouting and leading camping trips, it became apparent that my past cooking experience was not suitable for week-long backpack or canoeing trips as weight was a key element in planning. My friend introduced me to the bait packer and our cooking evolved around the efficient use of this wonderful method. Originally, with the boys, we were outfitted from the Boy, camp, Boy Scout camp with the prepackaged dehydrated foods. Besides the expense of this type of meal, they did not meet dietary requirements. We needed to make our own food and the bait packer became our primary cooking for all meals. My practice of trail cooking evolved to using only the bait packer with home prepared foods. Now for an introduction to the bait packer. The unit was sold at the Boy Scout office in Rochester, New York. They had two sizes and we weren't really sure what they were, but the literature presented some interesting facts. No putt scrubbing, easy cleanup and no mess, the two sizes available fit in a four quart, four quart pot or a number 10 food can. 
The issue now is that they are no longer manufactured, but I can tell you how to make them at the end of the presentation. The bait packer cooking process involves cooking in a plastic bag. An example, glad food storage with a twist top, the gallon bag. The bag sits upon a quarter inch aluminum grid that is one inch high. Water is placed in a pot to just shy of the top of the grid so that you are cooking with steam that comes in contact with the full bag. The pot must be covered for the full cooking time period. Cooking time is about 15 to 20 minutes in a bag. Stews, biscuits, cake, poached fish are just some of your options. Warning, never cook high liquid contents in the bag as it is too flexible to dispense and leaks during the cooking process. It is basically boiling water and no one wants to see anyone get scalded. When the food is done, done cooking, either use a ladle to dispense or if it is some form of bread or cake, remove the bag from the pot and serve. No mess, no cleanup, hallelujah. These pictures represent the standard bait packer which fits in a four quart cooking pot. The bottom left picture shows the quarter inch grid squares that fit in a retaining ring and rest at the bottom of the pot. The unit then permits the food in the bag to be steam cooked. This picture represents the four quart pot that fits the standard bait packer. My personal cook kit utilizes the ultralight bait packer or small diameter unit which fits in a number 10 food can. It is basically the restaurant food can that is always available through any food establishment, if you ask nicely. Within it, I can fit my camp backpack stove, bait packer, cooking bags, salt, pepper, pliers, can opener, top cover, and garbage bag. This is my total cooking kit for all cooking when my wife and I go on any remote camping trips. This permits a lightweight and efficient cooking method. Many delicious and satisfying meals have been prepared with this setup. The only limitation or benefit is that can it only accommodate a max of two individuals. For food, di food, di di yeah. food dehydration, as a result of deciding to make my own food, I decided to do food dehydration. I do not use an air dehydrator, but only use my home oven. The way to use your home oven to dehydrate is to have your oven set at the lowest temperature setting possible. If it's a gas oven with a lighted pilot light, that will actually be adequate to do the dehydration. Times vary by oven type. Our electric oven has a convection setting with the lowest set temperature setting of 175 degrees and the air is circulated, which helps dehydrate faster. My recommendation is to experiment with different foods for actual cooking time and result. I primarily make dehydrated vegetables and beef jerky. I have done chicken, but I do not like the way it reconstitutes in the food. In the following slides, I will show you two different items and how to dehydrate and prepare them. For vegetable dehydration, I primarily use frozen mixed vegetables. For this demonstration, I was pleasantly surprised because the frozen package did not contain lima beans. Lima beans dehydrate, but they do not rehydrate easily, and it's like eating rocks. I placed a cup of frozen vegetables onto a pizza tin or a flat cookie sheet for about two hours at 175 degrees temperature setting. The dehydration is complete, and 
The result of the dehydration was that we had one third cup of lightweight vegetables, which is 66% reduction in volume. The initial weight was 158 grams and it was reduced by 80% to 32 grams. To utilize these dehydrated vegetables in the evening for dinner, I carry a small pint size water bottle. I fill the bottle half full in mid afternoon and place the dehydrated vegetables in the water. This trick lets the vegetables partially rehydrate and it doesn't mess up the water requirements that the meal will require later. Beef jerky, for the protein portion of the meal, I do enjoy beef jerky. I use jerky both as a snack and within my meals. My recipe either uses flank or round steak, which are both lean, although the flank is a tastier meat. Meat is sliced approximately 3 16 inch thick. Marinate eight to 24 hours in a plastic bag or bowl in a refrigerator. To dehydrate, insert a toothpick through each marinated slice and hang it through the grill openings of your oven. Once again, I set my oven at 175 degrees and for the jerky, it was two and a half hours on a convection set setting. Level of dehydration is dependent on individual taste and how you want to use it. I prefer it so that the meat is still flexible and it will then become easier to chew. The marinade is based on olive oil, no salt because teriyaki has salt in it. Other optional ingredients can be liquid smoke, which I do not personally care for, Worcestershire sauce, hot sauce, etc. Find ways to marinate to your taste. After dehydration, the meat is now cured and safe to use in, in food without res refrigeration. I save it after it's cooled in a Ziploc sandwich bag. It will store for at least a year. I know because I found some that I didn't utilize on a prior trip and tried it. Well, I'm still here. Cooking dessert. Now it is time to start to get ready for dinner. We will make the dessert first and it is a layer cake. We use Betty Crocker gingerbread cake mix as it only requires water and one egg. I carry powdered egg so we do not have to worry about breaking eggs. You may pre-mix all the dry ingredients and just add water at the time of cooking. Insert all ingredients in the cooking bag and hand mix by massaging the bag to mix all ingredients into a soft mixture. Put bay packer in pot and put enough water in it so that it is just below the surface of the grid. Place the bag in the pot and spread the batter out evenly. It is impossible to do a perfect job. Do not worry. Fold the remaining bag down and cover the pot. Put the pot on your heat source, and when the water starts to steam through the cover, then start timing for 15 minutes. Never open the cover to check on a cake. It must remain covered the full time, and when 15 minutes is complete, remove the pot from the stove without opening the cover. Let it cool for five minutes, and at this time, you may now remove the cake from the pot and place it on a platter. Now let's see what the next step is after it is cooled. To prepare the cake, it is out of the bait packer container and still in the plastic bag. Place it on a small dish. Cut the plastic bag so that the sides may be separated three or four long cuts down to the side of the cake. It will show an irregular surface now that the plastic is opened. Place another plate upside down on top of the exposed cake and flip the cake over and remove the plastic bag completely. You now have a perfectly flat round layer cake. Many times we put a tree leaf down or some object on top to create a design. 
we carry powdered sugar that we will sprinkle on the cake. Once the sugar is added, remove the leaf. This method of cooking baked items works for bread, biscuits, pancakes, etc. It will not work for cakes, which have chocolate within the cakes mix. They do not set up correctly. Our main dinner course, now that we have finished making dessert and it is cooling, it is time to cook dinner using the basic ingredients that we dehydrated at home to make the dinner. We will use the beef jerky that we previously dehydrated and the dehydrated vegetables. To these items, I am adding a half cup of Uncle Ben's rice. It is easier to use instant rice, but I didn't have any available. Instead of adding just some spices for flavoring, I had a small vacuum package of lentils with flavoring that will spice up the full meal. The lentils have beans and a sauce in the package. I also cut up the jerky into bite-sized pieces. Now place everything into a bag along with one cup of water for the rice. Mix the ingredients and place the bag in your cooker. Follow standard bait packer cooking process. You end up with a beautiful dinner. It's also a very good trick to be able to mix any type of dried soup mop. Lipton's onion soup mix with quinoa, rice, or noodles, along with some protein or beans, and you can make a very tasty meal. Now let's see what dinner looks like. Here's your dinner served on Chinaware. Look at that tasty, colorful, appetizing meal, and there also is carrot cake. I made both carrot cake and gingerbread cake with each available bake packer that I had. Later, once you learn about the bake packer, there are many different things you can make, including poaching your fish. When we've gone camping later in the fall, we make stew at home and put it in a bag in the pot and freeze it. We can stack two frozen bags in the pot when we depart and will last a few days without refrigeration. Overall, be creative, experiment with your meals, and enjoy your newfound method of eating well in the wilderness. As I said at the beginning, the bake packer is no longer manufactured. On the web, if you Google bake packer, they will give you many thoughts on how to make one. We've experimented with these two shown methods, and the one I did not expect to work, worked great. It is the one on the left, which is a grid over a metal ring to keep it off the bottom. The steam comes through the holes and cooks your food. It is extremely light and takes up minimum volume. Another alternative was to make them up out of cut up ski poles. I did make one from two ski poles and cut the poles with a chop saw at a one inch and a quarter. The four quart, the four quart pot did not get enough pieces from the two ski poles, but my number 10 can will use about 80% of the pieces. The truth is that this method is heavier and awkward to place in a pot on the pot. It works just as well, except it is no fun putting them in and standing them up in the pot. The result were identical to the actual original bait packer. I made a carrot cake with these two homemade units. The carrot cake requires oil and water, no eggs. Feedback on the carrot cake from others who tried it indicate that they were very pleased and it tastes like a real cake. I was also very pleased. These pictures show the four different bait packers, two standard purchase units with quarter inch grids and the two homemade ones. All cakes came out wonderfully and there was no difference in cooking process or times. You can make a unit or find one and buy it. As the pictures show, the key trick is to create a platform which is above the water with a grid for the steam to pass through, and that will adequately support the bag of food. 
In summary, this is my sales pitch for the bait packer and a review of the key items you need to know. Do not use chocolate cake mixes. Pre-mix ingredients at home so that you can just pull out the bag, add water, and start cooking. Make stews at home and freeze. Most meals can be made at campsites in 20 minutes. Never cook high liquid content items as it is dangerous. For actual recipes, use about 25% less water as the plastic bag retains the water. And with that said, let's go to our final slide. Now that you've had your dinner and know how to cook it out, go out, eat hearty, and enjoy the great outdoors. Thank you for listening to my demonstration. I am now available for any questions. Have a good evening.